Do your photos often turn out too bright or too dark? In many cases, your camera thinks it's found the perfect brightness level, but you can see that it's actually way off for the type of photo that you want. You, of course, can fix this with complicated manual settings, but today I'll show you a much quicker and easier way. It won't take you more than adjusting one dial to get the correct brightness level in your photos. Even in tricky lighting conditions, you'll be able to take perfectly exposed photos, which is often the difference between good and great images. This magical feature is called exposure compensation. And now I'll go through some photo examples where you'll really want to try this technique out. We're in this fabulous street in San Miguel de Ende, and I want to shoot this really interesting hand door knocker. Now what makes this photo op great is the deep dark shadows. However, when I try to take the photo, the shadows are much brighter than I hoped. For example, you can see it's sort of a grayish look, not really a dark area. That happened because my camera aims for an evenly illuminated photo without too many elements being very bright or very dark. But that's not what I want. I want the dark elements to be maintained, not shifted to a grayish type of brightness. Let's see how we can find our way around that. First, I'll get you to switch to aperture priority mode. Now, getting into aperture priority, I'll show you two ways depending on your camera type. If you have a retro camera like this, all you need to do is make sure that the top dial with the shutter speed numbers, they go from one second all the way up to 4,000 or even 8,000, make sure that goes to A. Now, on your lens, you probably have what's called f-stop numbers. What I'd like you to do is make sure that you're not in A and you go to one of your f-stop numbers. For example, now, for the shot, I want to use an f-stop number of f5.6. Now, this is aperture priority mode for a retro-style camera such as this Fujifilm. Now, what if you have a Canon or a Nikon or Sony or any other kind of camera? No problem. Just go to A or AV, and you can find that at the top dial on top of your camera. And then, within your rear LCD screen, you'll be able to adjust your f-stop numbers simply by moving your thumb dial, your finger dial, or sometimes some cameras have a little joystick where you can actually flip from one f-stop number to another. Okay, now is when exposure compensation comes in. For retro style cameras, it's often a small dial on the top of the camera with pluses and minuses. If you don't have this dial, look for exposure compensation or EV in your camera's menu, or this symbol on the back of your camera. And I'll get you to go to minus one for a scene just like this if you're following along with your own camera. Going to the minus side means you want to make the photo darker. Let's take the shot again with minus one exposure compensation. Okay, we have a winner. The photo has a much richer shadow area and the overall impact is much more dramatic and striking. Remember that you can make the image darker by going more to the minuses and lighter by going more to the pluses. To illustrate this point, I took a photo of the same scene with various exposure compensation numbers from minus three to plus three. You can see that minus three is very dark and at plus three, very bright, way too bright. I still like the image at minus one exposure compensation, but this gives you a feeling of what else this feature can do for you. Now we've covered making your photo darker by going to the minus side of exposure compensation for rich dark shadows. But are there cases when you want to make your photo brighter? Absolutely. I want to photograph these VW Beetles. The problem is that when I take the photo, once again, my camera doesn't give me the brightness level that I was hoping for. It shows an average brightness. Also, we call that exposure. But because there is so much brightness in the scene, the photo should actually end up being much brighter than what the camera gave me. We'll fix this by going to the plus side in exposure compensation. If you're still in aperture priority mode, uh, please select plus one for this scene. When I take the photo now, all of the bright areas are as bright as I want them to be. It's excellent. This is a much better result compared to the original photo. One word of advice, make sure the bright areas of your photo are not pure white. This will result in your photo losing texture and detail in these far too white areas, which lessens the overall technical and artistic aspects of your photos. Even the brightest areas of your photo should still have at least a little bit of texture or detail. 
For example, this was the case with our previous photo example at exposure compensation value of plus one. To avoid far too bright highlight areas, also called blown out highlights, before taking the photo, check that none of your composition is completely white. Using exposure compensation, look for a good balance. The bright areas of your picture should be crisp and clean, but not so bright that the area just becomes a white blob. Now, there are exceptions where you actually do want blown out highlights, but this is mostly for artistic effects. If that is the case, go for it. Use exposure compensation to the plus side as much as you like to purposely get pure white areas with no texture or detail. Now, there's so much more I'd like to tell you about digital photography. And while I didn't hold anything back, there's only so much I could really share with you in such a short video like this. And that's why I've recorded an entire video course about taking incredible photos with your digital camera and finally taking your camera off of the auto mode. So if you'd like to find out more about my digital photography course, you'll find more information right under this video. So take a look at my full digital photography course and I hope to see you there.